Good morning and welcome to worship at Algiers United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Colleen and we're so glad to have you worshiping with us today. I want to share a few announcements. Uh, first of all, for those of you who are watching online, I want to remind you that we'll keep this online streaming up and going. So for as long as you feel most comfortable at home, know that we support you and encourage you, encourage you, well, I can't speak, uh, to continue to do so. Um, and uh, for those of you worshiping in person, um, we hope that if you get to feeling sick or anything like that, really to anyone, we hope you'll reach out to us. We want to make sure we walk alongside you, lift you up in prayer, and help in any way we can. But especially to those who are with us in person, let us know. We want to make sure we can reach out to the congregation if um, perhaps someone was here and might have exposed others. Um, so we just want to make sure we keep everyone's health at the forefront. Um, I want to remind you, um, if you're watching online, to send in any prayer requests you have early on in the service, and that way we can share those aloud to our church family. Um, I also want to say a huge thank you uh, to Connie, um, Sue and Mike's daughter in Tennessee made some additional cloth masks. They're uh, in a box in the back on the welcome table. So feel free uh, to, to grab one of those. And I think three of them in there are child size masks. Um, super cute. So um, we thank you, Connie, for that. Um, that's a huge help to our community. Um, for those of you watching online, it's Communion Sunday. We hope you'll take this time now to gather your communion elements if you haven't already. Um, maybe that's bread and grape juice. Uh, if for some reason you don't have those in the home, um, I hardly ever have grape juice in my house. And uh, know that water, wine, juice will work. Um, bread, crackers, tortillas. Um, God uses all things. Um, and we've been given kind of special permission at this time from our bishop um, to do things a little differently because we're living a little differently these days. Um, I want to remind you that we are starting today um, an online discussion group uh, united against racism. Um, the only prep work for this week's gathering is a 20 minute video. Um, and um, we hope that if you're interested in joining, uh, that you'll reach out uh, to let me know. Um, catch me on your way out today if you're interested and haven't already um, gotten that Zoom link sent to you. We'd love to have you participate. It's gonna be each Sunday in August. That's five Sundays starting today. Um, we'll gather from 6 to 7 p.m. on Zoom. Um, if you're not used to Zoom, let me know and we can talk through how you can use that. Um, but we're looking forward to having um, good conversations and time together. Um, any other announcements that I've overlooked? Now let us center ourselves for worship. Oh, I forgot an announcement, I'm sorry. Um, we got the most beautiful handmade card from Charles, um, one of the men in our prison ministry. Um, and it, his penmanship is amazing, but it's so fancy. God is good, and then blessings up here. And he's popped out little parts of the card and tucked them in throughout. Um, it all stands up on its own, and it's all handmade. It's just gorgeous. Um, he sent it with a long letter thanking the congregation for their prayers, for reaching out, um, for not forgetting him and others during this time. And so I just want to remind you um, that our prison ministry is still up and going, even though we're not gathering in person, um, that we're still reaching out, sending letters, um, having beautiful pictures sent, um, and then getting getting positive response from these people. So I just want to thank you as a congregation for continuing that ministry at this time. And now let us center ourselves for worship.
this time, I invite you to stand and join in our call to worship as we recite together the Apostles' Creed printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. your seats or uh, gather around the computer or tablet or wherever you're worshiping with us today. And I want to know, do any of you wear glasses? So, yeah, okay. So when I was little, I, I didn't wear glasses, but now I wear glasses sometimes. So I have astigmatism and I, I wear glasses when I read for a really long time or I'm driving a long distance. If I have to focus for a while, these help. But my good friend Catherine, when we were little, she didn't wear glasses either. But she couldn't see very well. And the funny thing is, is she didn't know it. Well, no one knew it. Not her mom or her dad or her grandparents. Not myself as her closest friend. No one knew Catherine couldn't see well. And Catherine, she thought everything was kind of fuzzy around the edges because that's how she'd always seen things. But as she got older, her parents noticed she was sitting really close to the TV. And when she got into school, she began to notice that other kids could see what was on the blackboard and she couldn't. And 
It was when we went on this vacation together. It was my friend Catherine, myself, her parents, and we were in the mountains, and her dad pulled over on the side of the road, and he said, everybody out, look, look. And there was this huge, like, flock, I guess would be the word, of bighorn sheep, longhorn sheep. They were just everywhere, tons of them, just covering the mountainside in white. Oh, they were awesome. And so we were like, this is so fun. And my friend Catherine said, where, where? All she could see was a blob of white, and she just assumed it was snow. She couldn't see the sheep. And that's when we realized Catherine needed glasses. And so she went home and went to the doctor. She got her new glasses. And everything looked so different. She discovered that everything wasn't fuzzy around the edges. She discovered that trees, like you can see the individual leaves on them, or that like you could see her mom's face across the room. It was a whole new world for Catherine. And I think that's kind of how it is with our vision and God's vision. Because maybe we see someone crying or throwing a fit and we think this person's mad or angry, but maybe God sees it and thinks this person's tired or weary. Or maybe we see someone who's hungry and needs a place to live. And maybe we see someone and think, wow, they look kind of lazy. But with God's vision, sometimes we can see that they have a heart of gold and they're just going through a tough time. God helps us see things in a new way. And once we know God, we can kind of start to see things like God sees them. And once we know how much better our vision can be, once we can see our mom's face across the room or see the flock or herd of longhorn sheep, then we don't want to go back to seeing things like we used to. We don't want to go back to that. We want to keep God's vision with us always. So can you put your hands together and repeat after me as we pray? Dear God, may we see what you see. Amen. At this time in our service, um, we normally invite our ushers to come forward and in an effort to kind of lessen the possible spread of, of infection, we have our offering plate at the back welcome table and here at the front of the altar. Um, so we invite those of you who are worshiping with us in person as you either come into worship or leave worship uh, to place your gift there if you're able. We also know that this is a hard financial time for plenty of people. So if you or your family are struggling, don't hesitate to reach out to us. I um, also want to remind those of you um, who are worshiping with us online, if you would like to mail in your gift, you can mail it in to Algiers United Methodist Church, 637 Opelousas Avenue, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70114. You can also uh, go online uh, to our website, www.algiersumc.com, and uh, click on that Support Our Church button. Or for those online or here in person, you can text uh, Algiers UMC to 22525, um, and it will bring up that link to give online. But let us pray over those gifts. God of grace and mercy, we offer our gifts to you this day, knowing that your love and presence have sustained us through all of our days. Help us to live as Christ calls us, to see others as God sees them, to share what we have, and to show love and compassion to all. Open our eyes to your new creation and prompt us to action, to make this newness a reality all across this earth. We pray all this in your holy name. Amen. As we enter into our time of prayers of the people, I want to lift up um, a few people before us. 
I want to pray for um, Chrisid and AJ, uh, who have tested positive for coronavirus. They say they're feeling better, but we're going to keep our prayers up for them anyways. Um, so we'll continue to pray for them during this time. I want to lift up Elaine Dishman and her family. Um, we've been praying for them and the loss of her brother a few weeks ago. And this past week, they had um, an unexpected and sudden loss of another brother. So we pray for you and we give thanks that you were able to be with us today, but know that our hearts are with you. We lift up Mary Ellen's friends, Dale and Felicia, both struggling with cancer. Florence um, Arevlo, um, who's ill. Um, Rafael Rubio um, is having shoulder replacement surgery on Wednesday. So we pray for them. Uh, joked with Sherry that this has been a, a season of surgeries that we pray in sooner rather than later. Um, so our prayers are with them. And we also lift up um, Jack Rowe, a four-year-old with cancer. Are there others we can be praying for this week? Yes, Antonika. Certainly, we lift up your mother at this time. Yes, Penelope. up all who are who are struggling with isolation at this time as well. Um, thank you, Penelope. Rooney. Leland. Leland Core, thank you. So many years of service. Um, we um, we celebrate with you. Um, we also pray for you in this time, um, adjusting to kind of a new normal um, in a time where everything is up in the air. Um, so know that you are in our prayers with that. We lift up um, Mary Woodley's um, son as well. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I want to say um, it has been a wonderful birthday week. Um, and again, it started off with beautiful flowers last week um, by this church family, which are still alive and well. Um, so thank you um, on our dining room table. Um, it's a huge, huge blessing to get to be here with y'all, uh, to get to do life and ministry with this church. So thank you so much. A any other prayer requests? Yes, Peggy. Yes, thank you, thank you. We lift up your sister, you said Debbie? Um, and yes, Patty is having another cataract surgery tomorrow. Thank you. When we lift up Raymond heading into surgery as well. Thank you. Just Thanksgiving, Patty said during Sunday school today that Ryan has to go back to work um, this week. Great. Uh, Sarah's still um, applied because she's lost her job. But, uh, Wonderful. Good. And just that reminder, we lift up all of those who are unemployed and under underemployed at this time. We give thanks for those who are getting to go back to work um, and will continue to be in prayer for all of our church family and, and, and extended family and friends um, for whom this time is just an extra struggle because of that. Thank you for sharing. Let us pray. Lord of our hearts, be our vision. Let us see things through your eyes. Let us see situations without the cloudiness of our own bias. Let us see people as you see them, seeing their souls instead of their flaws. Cleanse our hearts, O oh Lord. No matter the time of day, remind us that the best thing upon which we can focus on is you. 
Whether we're awake or asleep, your presence brings light to our lives. May all we know and say be of, from, and in you, O Lord. Let us always be with you as you are always with us. You are a great and loving parent, and it's a joy to be your children. We take solace in knowing that you live within us, and so form us to look, act, and speak so much like you that it's as though we're one. Shape us so that we don't want to pay attention to money or possessions or even compliments from those around us. We want our most valuable asset, our most valuable thing in our lives from here on out to be you. That you may be the first love of our life. No matter what happens or what tries to woo our hearts, help us to see things through the filter of you. For you are our leader, our guide, our savior, our God. And we pray all of this in the name of your son who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. lesson for today comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 14 through 18. Again that's 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 14 through 18. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all therefore all have died. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I remember an activity I did in youth group back in the day, and we were paired up with a partner, and one person was blindfolded, and they were led to a starting line, kind of of an obstacle course, if you will. And the other person, the seeing person, they took their place near the finish line. And the goal was for the seeing person to shout out commands and directions to their blindfolded partner, helping them to climb over and sidestep obstacles in order to reach the finish line first. 
you can imagine it was mayhem and I'm maybe you've played a game like this before but it was pandemonium it was a mess we had like 10 teenagers yelling out instructions at another 10 teenagers who were all blindfolded stumbling across this field I was one of the blindfolded ones for the game and I still remember how difficult it was trying to cross the field to the finish line. All of the voices of the callers were intermingled, so I couldn't tell which one was my partner and which one was saying to go left or go right or step over this object or this way, and it didn't help that I'm not really good with my left and my right either. So every, took, every step I took was this baby step taken timidly with a constant worry that I would either sprain an ankle or face plant in front of that really cute boy who was at the end of the finish line. And then after a round of this, they decided to play it again. And so I was thinking, great, I get to be a seeing person this time. No, no, still had to wear the blindfold. But they gave us different rules. So. The ones of us who were blindfolded would remain that way. But this time, rather than our partners standing at the finish line calling out directions to us, they would instead walk the course with us. The seeing partner would walk in front, and the blindfolded person would hold on to their shoulder from behind. Things went much smoother this time. It was still difficult being blindfolded, not knowing where you were going or what was ahead, but I was able to trust my partner's vision to guide me through safely. It can be disorienting when we aren't able to use our sight to guide us. Like when you wake up in the middle of the night and you're trying to find your way across the bedroom using memory alone, we've all run into things that way. And apparently out of our five primary senses, sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, sight seems to be the one we use most often. In fact, research estimates that like 80 to 85% of our perception, learning, cognition, and activities are mediated through our vision, which brings us to the hymn that we'll be looking at today as we continue our sermon series on the songs of our faith with the familiar hymn, Be Thou My Vision. The first verse of this hymn reads as such, Be thou my vision, Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought by day and by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence, my light. They're beautiful words, asking God to be our vision, but they're made even more beautiful when we learn a little bit about how this song came to be. It began as an ancient Celtic hymn, and the words are attributed to St. Fallon. He's a sixth century monk and poet. And St. Fallon actually went blind in the middle of his life, prior to writing the words for this song. And it was that experience of blindness that he drew upon to create these touching words. Knowing this, the words begin to take on an even deeper meaning. As we read them as St. Fallon asking God to fully be his vision, for God's presence to be his single source of light. When we sing these words with that backstory in mind, it's no longer about asking God to be a vision, as in asking God to be the vision that we see in front of us, which I think is what many of us interpret the song to mean. But rather, this hymn is asking God to become our vision, to take on that role of primary sensory source, asking God to become that through which the majority of our perception and learning and cognition and activities are mediated through. 
That's a huge difference. Rather than asking God to help us set our eyes on him as a vision before us, we're asking God to become our vision, to become that through which we see and interpret the world around us. It's by making that profound shift and how we're able to see, how we're able to obtain this new perspective, this new creation that Paul speaks of in our scripture this morning. Paul says, From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we no longer know him in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything is becoming new. When we decide to allow God to be our vision, we start to see the world from an entirely different perspective. Rather than seeing others around us and evaluating their value based upon worldly standards and interests, we begin to see them as God sees them, as beloved children, as individuals of sacred worth. There's so much struggle in the world right now. So much that makes us want to size others up to quickly assess which side they're on, whether that puts them with us or against us. We want to know immediately if the person we're talking to is right or wrong, progressive or conservative, good or bad, worthy or unworthy. But those questions show that we're too preoccupied with using our own human sight, rather than stopping to ask God to be our vision instead. In order to ask God to be our vision, though, we must first be willing to let go of our own flawed ways of seeing the world around us. And let's face it, that's not easy to do. Much like the game I played as a teenager, if we truly want God to be our guide, we must first be willing to put on a blindfold, to close our eyes, to relinquish control, to let go of our own jaded perspectives and to instead take on God's vision that's full of grace and love for all. This requires a surrendering on our part. And that surrendering can feel uncomfortable. It can make us feel vulnerable and even a bit scared. But the good news is that God doesn't simply wait for us at the finish line, yelling directions that we can't quite hear or understand. But rather, God chooses to walk beside us. God doesn't want us to go through life stumbling in the darkness. Instead, God comes to us and offers us a shoulder to place our hand upon. God comes to us and offers to guide us forward step by step, leading us around the obstacles that litter our way. God offers us God's presence as a light. God offers us God's vision for how the world should be. And it's beautiful. And it's because of that vision that we're able to say, everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Paul goes on to say, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. God offers us God's vision as a gift. A gift to see the world through God's eyes. A gift to partner with God. And reconciling all of the world back to God through love. One way we can practice this surrendering of our own sight is through prayer. 
We often close our eyes during prayer to kind of shut out any distractions, but also as a way to humble ourselves before God. Each time we pray, we're kind of relinquishing our vision, surrendering our sight in order to commune more intimately with God. And so I invite all of you as we pray together now and as you pray on your own throughout this week ahead to consciously ask God to be your vision. And so I invite you now to close your eyes to ask God to help you let go of our own human ways of seeing the world and to instead take on God's. So let us pray. Almighty God, be thou our vision, O Lord of our hearts. Place your hands, place our hands upon your shoulders. Guide us in your ways. Make us look upon the world with your compassion. May we see as you see. Amen. At this time, for those of you watching online, I invite you to gather around the communion elements that you've prepared. Um, as we step into this time of Holy Communion. I want to remind you, as I would, when we're doing communion as we normally would, that this isn't Algiers' table, this isn't the Methodist table, that this is God's table, that all are welcome here, that this table extends not just to those in this room, but because of the unique situation we're in, to those of us worshiping with us virtually, and as we believe on a deeply theological level, to those in the past and those in the future, to those all around the world as we gather at God's table. And so we remember that night that Christ gathered with his disciples and he took the bread and he broke it and he gave thanks and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took the cup and he blessed it and gave thanks and offered it to the disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Holy God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be your body, redeemed by your blood as we go forth into this world. Remind us of the gift it is to ingest you, to be one with you in this one body, one loaf, Lord. That we go forth from this place to act as your agents, your hands and your feet, with your eyes to see the world, with the compassion that you grant and the grace that you offer. We pray all this in your holy name. Amen. For those of you worshiping online, I invite you to take your bread, tear off a piece, offer it to whoever you're with or yourself, saying, the body of Christ broken for you. And then if you want, you can dip that in the cup or drink from the communal cup, saying, the blood of Christ shed for you. For those of you gathered here in person, communion looks a little different these days. We have the same bread that has been blessed, and our grape serves as our grape juice. Know that these have been blessed along with these elements and will be placed on the welcome table for you to take with you as you leave today. 
want to remind you that if you're at home, that um, we believe that the spirit of Christ comes into these elements. So we treat them with great care and respect. So I invite you to consume all of the bread and juice that you have with you. Um, and if you don't, instead of throwing it in the trash or down the sink, that we return it to the earth, um, either pouring the water on the plants or the juice on the grass, uh, scattering the bread or the crackers for the birds as a way to return that to nature, that Christ's grace continues on. Amen. At this time, I want to invite you to meditate on these words of our hymn for this week, Be Thou My Vision. Amen. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you, Elaine. And as we go forth from here, may we see the world as God sees it, with eyes of compassion and grace. Amen and amen. <laughs>